In this video, I talk about the Canada Pension Plan, or CPP for short. The CPP is designed to replace a portion of your income when you retire. If you qualify, you'll receive it for the rest of your life. It is Canada, so it is a taxable benefit. Today, I share with you the ins and outs of CPP, what you need to do to qualify, and how much you may get when you do retire. This is Money Minute Mondays, where I share a money tip in 10 minutes or less. I'm Maureen Dabransky, and this is Life Starts at Retirement. Before I get into the ins and outs of the CPP, I have to say, I am not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. I'm really just a frustrated Canadian that was struggling understanding the ins and outs of the retirement lifestyle, the finances, our pensions, and then I decided to do something about it. CPP is a Government of Canada pension designed to replace a portion of your work income when you retire. As we mentioned, it's fully taxable. This is Canada. It's a monthly benefit and you will receive it for the rest of your life if you qualify. Now, anyone who is 18 years of age or over in Canada and is employed must contribute to the Canada Pension Plan. Now, although there are benefits if you become disabled for yourself or your children and a small death benefit if you were to pass away, the contents of this video will be just on what personal benefits you may get if you qualify for the CPP. When you have money deducted off of your paycheck to, for CPP, it goes to the Canada Pension Plan Investment Board, CPPIB. So although the CPPIB is accountable to the Government of Canada and has to follow the rules and laws of the Canadian government, it's not controlled by the Government of Canada. So the government doesn't um, tell it what funds to invest it in or where to invest the money. It is a separate um, board that determines where this money is invested. And now I get asked all the time, Maureen, will there be any money for me when I can finally retire? Well, the last information that I've seen about the sustainability of the CPP through the CPPIB, it's sustainable for at least the next 75 years. So that's incredible and great news for Canadians. So what do you need to qualify to get your CPP? Well, it's really very simple. There's usually just two things. Number one, you have to be a minimum of 60 years old. And number two, you have to have contributed to this plan during your working career. Now there is one other exception to that if you're divorced or separated, but for the purposes of this video, I don't go into that. I will do another video on what happens to CPP if you are divorced or separated. Now, as I just mentioned, you need to be a minimum of 60 years old in order to qualify to get it, and you can delay it until you're 70, and I'll explain why you would want to do either of those in just a minute. But the big question is, I get asked this all the time, how much am I going to get? So the maximum amount that you can get for 2022 is $1,253.59. However, most people, most people that are just beginning to get their CPP get an average of $779.72. So of course you're probably thinking, why the difference between the full amount and the average? Well, here's how it works. Because CPP is a pension that you have to pay into in order to receive back, you need to pay the full amount from the time you were 18 until the time you were 65 in order to get the full amount back. And most of us, typically in our early years especially, would not have contributed the full amount. Therefore, most people get less than the full amount that's available. Now, there are a few ways to help you to get more and to get the maximum amount that you can from CPP. So the Government of Canada has decided that 
they will take approximately or up to eight years of your lowest earning years between 18 and 65 and take those off of your CPP, therefore maximizing a bit more of your CPP. Now I say up to eight years because if you haven't worked those full amount of years from 18 to 65, they'll prorate the number of years and then take that amount off again, to maximize your CPP. Now also, if you were the primary caregiver of a child under the age of seven years old, and because of that, you either stopped working and didn't have income or your income was lowered, you were able to apply to the Canadian government to have those years taken off as well. Now, the eight years that of your lowest income come off automatically. But if you were the primary caregiver of a child, you need to apply. So please make sure, go to Service Canada, and please make sure if that is you, you wanna maximize this and get the most you possibly can. So make sure to go to Service Canada and fill out those forms so you can get the maximum. And finally, if you are disabled and unable to work, same thing, you can request that those years be taken off of your CPP once again to maximize your dollar value. As I mentioned earlier, you can take your CPP anytime from the age of 60 to 70. And by far, the average age of someone collecting their CPP in Canada is 65. But you're probably thinking now, why the heck would I delay taking government money and wait until I'm 70? Well, here's how it works. The government of Canada has decided that if you take your, your CPP before age 65, so anywhere, anywhere between 60 and 65, they take away 0.6 of a percent each and every month. So that's 7.2% a year or 36% if you take it at 60 versus 65. Now, if you delay and take it anywhere between 65 and 70, the government of Canada will increase your CPP by 0.7 of a percent or 8.4% a year or a whopping 42% more than if you had taken it at age 65. Now there are valid reasons for taking your CPP at 60, 65, or 70, or any time in between. And I do have a video coming up in a little while that will explain those reasons and reasoning behind why you might wanna consider any one of those ages. Now last, I get asked all the time, will I get my CPP automatically when I turn 65? And that answer is no, you must apply for your CPP. So I highly recommend not only for CPP, but for anything, going to the website, My Service Canada, signing on. It can be a little bit of an onerous process, but figuring out how to get on there. And it has all of your numbers, which will make your retirement planning much easier. So I hope you've enjoyed this brief overview of the Canada Pension Plan. And if you're a frustrated Canadian as well, just trying to figure out the ins and outs of retirement and plan for it, please consider subscribing to this channel. I produce a Money Minute Monday video, of course, every Monday, and I produce a, re a retirement lifestyle video every Saturday. Now, I'm also growing an amazing community on Facebook. I'd love to have you join me there. It's facebook.com slash groups slash life starts at retirement. My name is Maureen Dobransky, and this is Life Starts at Retirement.